Hey everybody, this is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we check out inverse variations. And how do things vary inversely? Well, we're in the Math Common Core Standard of Ratios and Proportions, and we're going to be analyzing and using proportions to solve real-world problems. Our guiding question we're going to be able to answer today is how can we use a graph to tell if something varies inversely? We've looked at direct variations in the past, and now we're going to look at inverse variations. All right. Inverse variation, simply put, is it's some number divided by some other number x, and it gives you y. Now, if you're not really familiar or sure what that means, we'll look at that here in just a second. But if you think about it, I'll give you a real-life example. If you practice basketball, an inverse variation says that the more you practice, the less shots you hypothetically will miss. That's an inverse variation. The more you do something, the less something happens. Whereas a direct variation says the more you practice, the more shots you make. The more you do this, the more that happens. Whereas an inverse variation says the more you do this, the less something else happens. Make sense? All right. Well, like I said, direct variation is x increases, so does y. But as an inverse variation, x increases, y decreases. All right, so let's look at that. We got x times y equals 3 is an inverse variation. So if you multiply x and y and you get some number 3, you're good to go. Or if you just take the 3 and divide it by x and you get the y, it's also the same thing. It'll end up looking like this. This is your graph here if you were to graph it. And it's called an inverse variation. And this is what it is. It can be written as x times y equals some number or y equals some number divided by x. In other words, as x increases, y decreases, and when x decreases, y increases. All right, the most helpful one here, I think, is this one, the x times y equals some number. And you'll see why here in just a minute as we look at a table of values to see if we can figure out what an inverse variation is by looking at an example. So for example, something like this, y equals 3x is a direct variation. Here, it's some number times x equals y, whereas an inverse says x times y gives you that same number. You can also write it like this, if you had thought about it. If you move that, how do you get rid of multiplying by x? You divide by x and bring it over to the other side, and you get y divided by x equals 3. That's the other option, too. So inverse is x times y gives you a number. Direct is y divided by x gives you some number. So... Basketball coach noticed in the middle of the season, the more practices and X, more practices of, that you practice of X player attended, the less mistakes happened in the game. This is an inverse variation because as X increases, Y decreases, and if X decreases, Y increases. All right, look at these charts, and you're going to tell me if these measurements vary inversely. Again, one of the easiest ways is just to take the x value, multiply by the y value, and see if you get the same number every time. So here, for example, you have the x value of negative 2 and the y value of negative 1. Multiply negative 2 times negative 1. That gives you positive 2. Take the x value here of 2 and the y and multiply those two together, and you get 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 6 times 3 is 18. 8 times 4 is 32. So it does not vary inversely across the whole thing. Now here it did because it was negative 2, negative 1. That's 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 4 times 2, not so much. Now this guy, let's try this one. We have a half times 6, which is 3. 1 times 3, which is 3. 3 times 1, which is 3, and 6 times a half is 3. So this one does vary inversely because when you take x, multiply it by y, you get the same number every single time. All right, what about these? Are these direct, inverse, or neither? Remember, direct has got to go through 0, 0, and it's some number times x equals y. Inverse, take x, multiply by y, equaling some number. And then neither, just something funky, doesn't even look right. So like this one, 2y equals 3x plus 1. Now if you have adding on one side and not the other side, it's most likely going to be neither. 
okay? Because it's not some number times x equals some number times y. It's some number times x plus another number. So this one's neither. Now this one, let's look at this guy. Now, let's cross multiply. What's 6 and 5? That's 30. Cross multiply here. x times y. Well, which one of those, direct or inverse, is x times y equals some number? Here on number 5, we're going to cross multiply and it becomes y equals 4x. Which one's that? And that last one, man, it's a piece of cake. All right. Remember, direct equals y equals some number times x, and inverse is x times y equals some number. Here's your hints, final answers. All right. Ready to do some on your own? Now, what I want you to do here is I want you to figure out this is x, this is y, x, y, x, y, and so forth. Is it direct or inverse? Remember, inverse is the easiest. Just take, just take x, multiply it by y, and see if it's the same when you multiply this x by that y, and this x by that y, and this x by that y. If not, it's not inverse. It will most likely be direct. Take this, multiply it by that, and get 6. Take negative 2, multiply it by that same number, and get 4. See if that's direct or inverse. Same thing with this guy. When you're looking at some real life examples, when you looked over your homework, you realize that you missed more questions the less time you spent on your assignment. Is that inverse or direct? Whereas this one, when you looked over your homework, you realize that the higher your grade was, the more you studied. And let's look at this one. 8 over x equals 4 over y. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with cross multiplying and dividing. A equals 4 x times y. You can divide by 4 there, divide by 4 there. Those cancel, and you get 2 equals xy. You can tell me which one that is now. All right, well, how you doing? You kind of getting the idea of inverse and direct and the difference between the two? Here's some hints about what you're doing. All right. You able to answer this question now of how you can use a graph or charts to tell if something varies inversely? Remember, definitely want to look at the x and the y values, combine them together by multiplying, and see if you get that same number every single time. Well, that's it as we talk about inverse variations in basketball and dealing with y and x and some random number k. This was Matt from MathsMath.com. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter at MathsMath. And enjoy math and basketball.